Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahabushai, Bahashem, Rakahakwadash, Barakatum. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahabushai. Double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone who ruled and teach well. In peace and salutations to you, sincere Akiyam out there, pushing this word in truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you brothers endure until the end. This is the brother Raya with another video, and I'm going to start it off in Revelation chapter 9, verse 12. One woe, her destruction is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And this is speaking of World War I, World War II, which of course have both passed, and World War III, which, you know, for all intents and purposes, you can say we're in the beginning of it. But World War III is ultimately going to culminate in, you know, the so-called Middle East, really Western Asia with the battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, the War of Armageddon. This is Joel chapter 3, start at verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, the heathen Gentiles, prepare war. World War Three, battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh. And those mighty ones are the death angels holding back, you know, this great destruction, waiting to get the go-ahead to release it, which is mainly going to happen after the M-A-R-K-O-F-T-H-E-B-E-A-S-T in Revelation 13 verses 16 to 18, which is the RFID slash NFC C-HIP implant is mandatorily implemented. Verse 12, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, which in the Hebrew is Yahweh's Shapat, which means Yahweh's judgment. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about and when you go to the first couple of verses of this chapter you'll see what the ultimate reason for this is the most high judging you heathen nations chiefly the biblical edomites or you so-called white people for afflicting the apple of his eye the true children of israel who are known as the so-called negroes latinos and native americans today read psalms chapter 83 put ye in the sickle for the harvest is ripe Come get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of Yahweh is near in the valley of decision. And what just took place, you know, today. Iran's retaliatory, you know, missile strike on the state of Israel. For Israel's recent, you know, attacks on their allies, you know, such as Hezbollah, you know, their incursion into southern Lebanon, as well as those deletions they did on those, uh, you know, Iranian officials a couple of months ago. And, uh, you know, all this is, hey, getting us that much closer to that third woe, you know, coming to its final, you know, conclusion you know, with the battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat and ultimately those nuclear missiles being shot to the ends of the earth, which, you know, I opened up the video with those verses to preface this article on usatoday.com. Hey, just again to show that the day of Yahweh is very near in the Valley of Decision. Iran launches major missile attack on Israel. Iran fired waves of missiles at Israel on Tuesday in what it called a revenge attack for Israel's killing of several Hezbollah leaders, including its top leader, Hassan Nasrallah. There were no immediate reports of uh, Israeli casualties from the barrage, which targeted Tel Aviv and other central parts of Israel. A man was reported killed in Jericho in the West Bank. Iran fired about 200 missiles, a Pentagon spokesman said. Based on what we know at this point, this attack appears to have been defeated and ineffective. 
National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said at the White House. And we're just going to have to wait and see, you know, as the hours and days go by of what the true extent of this attack was. But, you know, since we're coming into a major war, you're going to have to really scrutinize a lot of the you know, media coming out about casualty figures and battles and stuff like that. And what do they call it? The fog of war propaganda to make, uh, you know, a particular side look like they're winning and unstoppable and the other side weak and easily defeatable. The majority of the missiles were intercepted by the Israeli air defenses, the Pentagon said. Two U.S. Navy destroyers that fired about a dozen interceptors. Israel and the U.S. promised to respond. We will choose when to collect the price and prove our precise and surprising attack capabilities in accordance with the guidance of the political leadership. Israeli Major General Hezri Halevi said in a statement, the attack comes as the Middle East appears to be teetering on the brink of a multi-state war and followed an Israeli ground operation into Lebanon on Tuesday where Iran-backed Hezbollah is based. We have made clear that there will be severe consequences for this attack and will work with Israel to make that the case, Sullivan said. The missile barrage was the latest escalation in the weeks-long skirmish between Hezbollah and Israel and comes days before the one-year anniversary of Hamas's October 7th attacks on southern Israel. Hamas is an ally of Hezbollah and is also supported by Iran. The attack also comes just as the Jewish high holiday Rosh Hashanah begins at sunset on Wednesday. The assault caused sirens to sound across Israel Millions entered bomb shelters as Israel's defense forces worked to intercept the missiles. The White House said President Joe Biden had directed the U.S. military to aid in defending against the attacks. Make no mistake, the United States is fully, fully, fully supportive of Israel, Biden said after gathering with his national security team earlier in the day to monitor the airstrikes. Asked about a U.S. response, Biden told reporters that remains to be seen. And hey, the United States of America is going to follow the state of Israel down this road of death and destruction, you know, to their destruction. And that's all a part of biblical prophecy as well. This is Joel chapter 2, verse 20. But I will remove far off from you the northern army, the North American army, the U.S. military, and just recently, you you had uh, the Biden administration send, you know, a couple thousand more troops to that region. And they're going to continue to do so as the battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat continues to escalate. And I will drive him into a land barren and desolate like a desert, you know, the so-called Middle East, with his face toward the East Sea. And ultimately, you know, the main staging ground for the battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat is going to be Saudi Arabia. And what's to the east of Saudi Arabia, the Persian Gulf, and above that, Iran. And then to the northeast, you have the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in Iraq, which last week you had some, uh, you know, some uh, militant forces in Iraq shoot missiles at Israel. And his hinder part toward the utmost sea or behind him, the Red Sea, which, you know, for the last damn near year, the U.S. Navy has been battling those Houthi Iran backed rebels in the Red Sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he had done great things. A great slaughter of U.S. military personnel in the Valley of Jehoshaphat during that battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And remember what Biden just said with three foolies that they're going to support Israel. And, you know, the state of Israel knows that. So they're going to continue to escalate further digging that grave for themselves and the grave for the United States of America. Therefore, hear the counsel of Yahweh that he had taken against Edom, you so-called white people, you know, you Americans, the British, you know, the Europeans, Russians, South Africaners. And 
you know, those people in the Holy Land right now who, uh, you know, I'll be referring to as the 1948ers for the rest of the video. You're not the true children of the Most High, which, as I said earlier, are the so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. You're Edomites yourself of the tribe of Amalek. And his purposes that he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Teman, surely the least of the flock. You 1948ers shall draw them out. And what did we just uh, read in that article? That the Middle East... Well, let me quote it verbatim. The attack comes as the Middle East appears to be teetering on the brink of a multi-state war. And uh, who's the one... You know, that's in the midst of all this foment and all this chaos, the least of the flock, the 1948ers. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out, draw out the United States of America and the other NATO nations in on the side of the 1948ers. But who's it going to draw out on the side of Iran? Russia, China, and her other major allies. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them because ultimately what's going to happen is uh, nuclear missiles are going to be shot on the, you know, the Holy Land as well as the United States of America. And while, you know, the Holy Land will be rebuilt, the United States of America is going to become a desolate, uninhabitable wasteland where man, woman, or child will never set foot on ever again. Read Isaiah chapter 13, Jeremiah chapter 50, Revelation 18, and Isaiah chapter 34. That's pretty much it with this article. You get the point. But hey, as we can see, one woe is past and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And World War Three is quickly coming upon us because as bloodthirsty as, you know, the 1948ers and the U.S. are, you know, they're not just going to let this slide by. They're going to retaliate, which is going to cause Iran to retaliate. And it's just going to be a continued escalation until this war fully you know pops off but i'm gonna close it on a little bit of a different note because you know a lot of you bird brain christians still think that those 1948ers are the true children of the most high when they clearly don't fit any of the prophecies that the true children of israel would be going through when they were back in the holy land where we just were just reading about a, a missile strike where, you know, a lot of people were fleeing into bunkers, you know, screaming and scared and all that. And it remains to be seen what the uh, casualty numbers were. But let's see what it says in prophecy, what the true children of Israel would be going through when they were back in the Holy Land. This is Isaiah chapter 60, verse 18. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise so when the children of israel were back in the holy land violence would no more be taking place there and when you further read in what let's go to it micah chapter 4 micah chapter 4 i'm gonna start at verse 1 but in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of yahweh you know the government the kingdom of heaven shall be established in the top of the mountains, the sole authority on the face of the earth. Beginning, you know, with the elect, the house of David, and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow unto it. And many nations, many heathen nations shall come and say, let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh and to the house of the power of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. And are we seeing that with the, uh, you know, the majority of the people of this planet with those uh, 1948ers? Of course not. A lot of people have been condemning them for their actions. 
in a uh, you know Gaza and how they're treating those Palestinians. And then just recently, Benjamin Netanyahu gave a speech at the UN where a lot of you know world officials walked out on him on that speech. For the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. And when Tel Aviv is known as Pink City and it's one of the alphabet hotspots on the face of the earth, we clearly know that the law of the Most High isn't going forth from Zion. But here's the main point I wanted to get to. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And as we read in Isaiah 60, verse 18, violence would no more be heard in thy land, which, if you're honest with yourself, you know, it's without a shadow of a doubt that, you know, that peace and safety is not taking place, not just in the Holy Land, but on the entire face of the earth. Because there will be peace once the true children of Israel are back in rulership. No more weapons of war. No more uh, chaos or anything like that. So if those people over there don't fit the prophecies dealing with, you know, what the children of the Most High would be going through when they were back in the Holy Land, do they fit any prophecies? Yes, they do. This is Ezekiel 36 verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, which is just the Greek way of saying Edom. And remember, those 1948ers are the, of the tribe of Amalek and against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession. And how did the 1948ers get that land? Laying the groundwork with the Balfour Declaration after that first woe, World War I, and then further cementing the deal after the second woe, World War II, you know, with the, their Declaration of Independence and other UN charters. And immediately what happened after that, the 1948 Arab-Israeli War, then you had the Six Days War in the 60s, fast forward all the way to today with uh you know their current war against hamas and hezbollah and iran shooting missiles onto them which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey and now we are at the times when yahabu bahasham yahavashai is going to judge you heathens you know chiefly you edomites for afflicting the apple of his eye like I said earlier, when I was going into Joel chapter 3, that's the main reason this battle is about to take place. Joel chapter 3, verse 1. And what does the header read? The nations will be judged. For behold, in those days and in that time, which we're currently living in, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah, the southern kingdom, or the so-called Negroes, you know, so-called African Americans, so-called Black Americans, and Jerusalem, the Northern Kingdom, the so-called Latinos and Native Americans, the elect of all twelve tribes waking up and coming back to their power. Yahabo Bahasham Yahabashai. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, Yahweh's Shapat, Yahweh's judgment. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered amongst the nations, hey, the transatlantic slave trade, and parted my land, back in Ezekiel 36 verse 5, and against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession with the despiteful minds and the joy of their hearts. So that's it with this video. With this video, I hope you sincere Akiam and Akwath were edified. Just keep strong, as we can clearly see, we are almost out of this final wicked captivity of the heathen nations, chiefly of the Edomites. And again, as always, you know, I'm going to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who ruled and teach well. And peace and salutations to you sincere Akiam out there. Pushing this word and truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you brothers endure until the end. Shabbat Shalom.